Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. But while he thought about these things, then Joseph, her husband, verse 19 says, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said to him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Many times, before I continue to read, many times we think we have this idea that the birth of Jesus was supernatural. Not true. The birth of Jesus was as ordinary as any other birth today. But the conception, the conception was supernatural because Mary was impregnated by not the seed of a man, but by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, when he was born, he was born 100% man, but he was also born 100% God. It was not 50-50. All right? So the conception was a miracle. And then we read, and verse 21 says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And so all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took to him his wife. And he did not know her, till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name, as the angels told him, Jesus. I think it's one of the challenging topics to minister about because I think just about everybody knows the Christmas story. But yet, when we look at God's Word and we talk about the Christmas gift, this gift of Christmas, I think it suffice to say that we need to just focus for a few moments again on God's Word. You see, because uh, unfortunately the times that we are living in, it, it seems to me the closer we get to the return of the Lord, the more Jesus is being put aside and more attention is given to Santa Claus. When we think about Christmas, and please don't think now, maybe some of you are already thinking about, some of you already told me before the service, you've made your confession to me and said, so-and-so can't be here because we're busy with cooking. The leg of lamb is in the oven. Forget the leg of lamb now. Forget the hunarki. Forget the scar boat. Forget the gammon. For a few moments, let us just focus on the real reason for the season. You see, unfortunately, in this postmodern society, the secular world that we find ourselves in, Jesus has been pushed aside long ago. And sad to say that even in churches, many a times we, we have forgotten the real meaning and the reason for Christmas because for many people, Christmas has become about the festive season. We sing in Christmas carols. We think about the food. It's a time of giving, time with the family. I remember when I was a child of Bing Crosby, he sang about dreaming of a white Christmas, and then Michael Bublé took over from him. And he also sings about dreaming of the white Christmas. Mariah Carey is still waiting for a, a Christmas present. All I want for Christmas Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is still going around. Boney M is still singing Feliz Navidad. And they're still singing Mary's boy, boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. 
Some still sing Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> Jingle bells. I took a walk the other day with my family. It was so lovely. I walked like Abraham with all my children and all of my grandchildren. And as we walked from the park, I had to take a video because my eldest granddaughter, she was on the shoulder of her dad, and they were singing jingle bells and jingle bells. And now I want you to understand I don't have a problem if we want to celebrate the season. But many a times people will come to me and say, Pastor, but what do I do as a Christian? Can I say to you, it is your God-given obligation and your God-given responsibility to tell and teach your child about the real reason of Christmas and why Jesus came to this earth. Some people want to debate about whether Jesus was born on the 25th. It's not even news. We know Jesus was not born on the 25th of December, and I've got good reason to believe that. But I'm not going to debate about it now, because the important thing is not the date. I want you to understand the important thing is the fact that if there was no birth, there could be no crucifixion. So I don't want to, I don't worry about the date. But what I do worry and what I'm concerned about is that people miss the reason why Christ came. And for many people, they want to claim the festivity and they, they want to give out presents. They, they want the, pre the, 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 the presents that's associated with that. But they want nothing to do with Jesus as the Son of God. I find it ironic. Jesus never told us in His Word to remember his birth. He did say, as often as you come together around the table, remember my death. You see, many people love the birth because it's about holidays. It's about Christmas carols in the mall. It's about putting down the presents under the gifts under the, the tree. But we don't know the real reason for the story. Somebody said to me the other day, Pastor, you know, we have CEO Christians. Some Christians only come to church when it's Christmas, when it's Easter, and some other public holiday. God doesn't want us to come only together when it's this time of the year. God wants to see that we are committed to be every Sunday in the house of God. Can I get an amen? amen. So, Jesus said, Gerard, I want you to tell them the gift of Christmas. What is this Christmas gift that I'm talking about? And yes, it's easy to say Jesus is the gift. But I'm going to give you four blessings, four words tonight that is associated with Jesus. And you have to remember them because this can change your life. This can change your life for good. Because you see, the first reason why Jesus is the gift, number one, is the word salvation. There can be no salvation unless you have Christ in your life. I want you to know, and for those that listen to me on the broadcast, I want to make a bold statement. Jesus Christ is the only way to God the Father. There is salvation, the Bible says. I don't care what the theologians that are very clever say and what the philosophers say that deny the virgin birth, those that deny the incarnation, those that deny that He came in the flesh. But I want to say tonight that Jesus was the only name given under heaven. God's Word says in Acts 4, under the heavens by which man shall be saved. It's the only name Oh my. Matthew wrote in verse 21. He said, And she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus. Somebody say with me, Jesus. Jesus. Say it with faith in your heart. Jesus. And he, Jesus, will save his people from their sin. You see, what we have lost in the Garden of Eden when the first Adam sinned, the second Adam came. 
And what he did is a beautiful word. He redeemed us. And you know what the word redeem means? He bought us back from a place called the Agora, the slave market. He bought us back out of the slave market. And he said, you, 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 me, we belong to God. And I will pay for you. And how much will I pay for you? I will die for you on the cross. And I will pay for you with my blood so that you and I can be set free, liberated, knowing that we know when I die, I'm going to be in the presence of God. It's not that I have to hope. It's not that I wish I'm going to be there. I know that I know when I die, I am with the Lord in His presence. Because he bought me back. When the first Adam failed, the second Adam never failed. I'm so thankful that I can know the second Adam. Jesus, the Son of God. You see, the beauty of this is you don't have to work for your salvation. In fact, you cannot work for your salvation. It is a free gift. so that no man can boast and says, I've worked for it. Jesus did the work. I have to believe in him. So the gift of Christmas starts off with salvation. But I love the second one as well. The second blessing of the gift of salvation, you can enjoy the presence. I'm not talking about the presence. I'm talking about the presence of God Almighty. And, and, and I wonder if, if there's a contradiction in the Word of God because sometimes people love to talk to me about contradictions. I welcome you to talk to me about your contradictions because I will refute that which is not the truth. The Word of God says, Isaiah the prophet prophesied. What did Isaiah say his name shall be? The angel revealed to Joseph, you shall call him Jesus. But what did Isaiah the prophet say? You shall call him Emmanuel. Now we have no biblical record that Joseph and Mary, his parents, or the disciples called Jesus Emmanuel. Yet, Isaiah said, he shall be called Emmanuel. So you have given two names. You see, because Jesus is who he is, his name, and Jesus is what he does to save his people from sin. But Emmanuel speaks to you and me about his presence. He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Yes, even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall no fear no evil because God says, I am Emmanuel. My presence is with you. That's the blessing. This is the blessed gift of Christmas. It's not that I'm just saved but I also have the ability to experience His presence. Oh, praise God, aren't you glad? Some, some of you look at me as I was preaching in Greek. You say, Pastor, what is the presence? Church. Many people get stuck by the, 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 the decorated tree of Christmas, but they avoid the disturbing tree of Calvary. We love the tree of Christmas, but don't tell me. Don't come with the Jesus stuff. Oh, church, we need to shape up and wake up. Because there's only one way to the Father. He's coming back for a spotless bride. He's coming back for an overcoming church. He's coming back for His body. He's coming back for the church that He said, I will build my church, but God will build His church with faithful people. God never build His church with people that are not faithful. Many are called, but few are chosen. God is looking for those that are willing to say, Here am I, Lord, use me. He is God with us. He is Emmanuel. Hallelujah. The third part of this beautiful, blessed Christmas gift, and we sang about it, is joy. Hallelujah. Now I'm not talking about walking around with a smile. Some people have a six o'clock face. I, I, I prefer the three o'clock. But some people, oh, God is good. 
oh man, you're sucking lemons. Keep on sucking, we'll make lemonade. Listen to Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Just by the way, this is one of the reasons we know Christmas was, uh, is not on the 25th of December. I just spoke to somebody this afternoon in Bethlehem. It's freezing cold. It's snowing. Sometimes, not now, but sometimes. But the fact of the matter is, shepherds are never out in the field when it's cold. And they definitely are not out this time of the year. You won't find them out. But verse 9 says, And behold, an angel of the Lord. So that could have been round about October month. An angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Man, Jesus, when he came, he came in with a bang. <laughs> the angels were there when he was born, and they were there on the Mount of Transfiguration. God spoke, but they were there when he was crucified, risen from the dead. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Somebody say with me, good tidings. Of what? Great sadness. Great what? Great joy. Great joy. Which will be available to all people. Now isn't it interesting that John chapter 10 is another Bible verse where Jesus said this word, the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And I've noticed, yesterday was my birthday, but I've noticed, yesterday, 38 years ago, I committed my life to Christ. I've never been sorry one day. You thought you missed my natural birth. I see some of you are getting worried, don't stress. The pastor won't have a secret birthday. That you can be sure. But I celebrated 38 years yesterday of serving the Lord. And I can tell you, He's never failed me. I, that, that one old chorus, it's a little bit wrong, the words, never failed me yet. As if He's going to fail me. He can only fail me, man. He's not going to fail you now, not tomorrow, not the day after, not even in the millennium. He's not going to fail you. But here's the point. He comes to give us joy. But one of the tactics the enemy uses is to steal our joy. And what does he do? He brings in temptation, distractions. Come on, church. Listen to me. The, 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 when Santa is coming to town, he doesn't bring you real joy. Now, if you have your children here tonight and you go away from you and they say, Mom, Dad, is there no Father Christmas? And tell them the real reason. You see, children, family of God, my brother is here in the house. When we grew up in our home, we always had a Christmas tree. And we had presents under the tree sometimes. But I remember we, Mom used to take a stockings, I say kosa. Then you hang it there by the bed. Because tonight, Christmas Father's going to visit. And tomorrow morning, true as Bob. Wow, look at all the presents. And I'm excited. And then we started going to family out in a place called Swellendam. And we had family, and every Christmas when we came together, I saw my uncle disappear kind of six o'clock in the evening. Where's he going? He's always visiting his girlfriend. And then round about 11 o'clock, he doesn't come home. But guess who walks into the room? Ho, ho, ho! And, and here he walks in. And I sat there for, I often thought, is this him or is it not him? He, he did a pretty good job. And then everybody gets a present, even the cat. And the cat gives a present to the dog. That's how my aunt and them live. But you know, family, the one thing I could never understand, and up until today, I actually realized my mom and dad, they never told me the real reason for Christmas. Today I'm standing in the ministry by the grace of God. But I determined in my life that our children will understand the Christmas story. 
doesn't matter how you do and what you do, but as long as you don't keep the truth away from them and explain to them the reason for Christmas. Are you with me? I'm giving you good counsel free of charge. But nowadays I spoke about distractions. We have an imposter by the name of Santa Claus because Santa Claus is getting more attention than Jesus. He's the one that gets people to sing all the songs. Sometimes young little children can't even sit on his, on his lap. And he brings uh, supposedly presents. But there's no presence. No presence. My brother and sister, friend, without Jesus in your season, you will never experience true joy. On the other hand, Jesus in my life makes it possible that I can enjoy His joy in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of a trial, in the midst of the process when they tell me your job was made redundant. When they say to you, thank you, but we don't need you anymore. When other people's wheels fall off, Gerard Dupree's wheels don't fall off. Do you know why? Because the Lord, His joy in me is my strength. And it should be the same to you. You see, when I talk about joy, I'm not talking about walking around with a smile, but knowing that you are in control because of the Spirit of Christ in you. You can experience that joy inexpressible, so much so that when you lose your job and you walk out there with your head lifted up and they say to you, how can you be so friendly? Come on, you've lost your job, sunshine. You know why? Because he's in my life. He's in my life. And when he's in my life, I don't run around like a, a chicken whose head has been chopped off. Have you seen how a chicken runs with the head chopped off? He can still run. But he runs every direction. I've seen that on a farm. Now, I don't run around like a, chop, a head chopped off chicken. Because I'm not a chicken. And my head is still on my life. Of my life. Hallelujah. I have, to, I have to use a little bit of humor because some of you are falling asleep here now. See, family of God, the joy of the Lord does not depend on my circumstances. It depends on my relationship with Him. So what is the first gift of Christmas? My wife is here with me. Come on now. The first gift is salvation. Number two. His presence. I, I don't think we understand. Can you understand, imagine the presence of God? The presence of the Creator? I, I, I need to give you an astronomical fact. I, I saw something yesterday that just blew my mind. They say that the planet Jupiter, which is in our solar system, is something like on average 720 million kilometers away from Earth. I can stand outside tonight if it's clear sky. I can pinpoint Jupiter with a naked eye to you. But 720 million kilometer. Now, if a commercial airplane which flies normally at the speed of about 900 kilometers per hour had to take off today and decide to go to Jupiter, it will only take them 98 years to get there. It's going to be quite long, right? I feel sorry for the guys that want to go with uh, what's uh, Elon Musk. And I feel sorry for the guys who want to go to Mars. It's going to take them uh, quite some time. Because the God whom we serve is big. And this is what I'm trying to say, that this big God that created everything chose a human being like me and you, 
and say, I dwell in you. Oh, God, can we just for a moment just thank Him for His presence? Oh, God, I can't understand it. Maybe I can't always explain it. But His presence, the God of the universe, is in my life. Wow. And because He's so big, He can do anything. He can do anything. Oh, do we serve a good God, church? Hmm. Family of God. Sadly, this time of the year is a time when we counsel many people. This time of the year is a time when many people become depressed. Many people contemplate suicide. Many people are lonely. Because Christmas is not for everybody a happy story. But without Christ, it's not Christmas, but without Christ, you've got no hope. No hope. But with Jesus, we have hope. Amen, Amen church. Amen. I've got one more point for those of you counting. The last blessing. Salvation. Presence. Joy. Say to your neighbor, joy. joy. Say to the other neighbor, Wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. You didn't see that one coming. Here's my last point for the evening. Jesus did not only come to give me life and life in abundant salvation. He did not only come to redeem me. He did not only come to, to, to saturate my life with His presence. Did not only come to give me joy inexpressible and full of glory. He came to give us peace. Hallelujah. And let me just say peace, church. Peace is not the absence of war or the absence of problems or the absence of difficulties. Peace is the presence of a person and his name is Jesus Christ. You cannot have peace unless you know the Prince of Peace. Paul was right when he wrote to the church in Thessalonica. In 1 Thessalonians 5, he said, but in the last days, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them as birth pains upon a pregnant woman. The world cannot offer peace. There will never be peace on this earth unless the Prince of Peace is here. And there will never be peace in your life and in my life unless I know the Prince of Peace. Wasn't that one of the names that the prophet Isaiah said? He shall be called Prince of Peace, Counselor, Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Church, the biggest gift the Christmas gift is God who gave His own Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not die but have everlasting life. And the next verse, but God did not send His Son to this world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Without the cross or without the birth, there couldn't be a cross. Why do I preach you this sermon? I'm so glad I didn't shower before I came here because I need to go and have a shower afterwards. I can feel the heat here. But why do I tell you about Jesus tonight? Why did I bring you this message? Not because I just wanted to say something and thought, what could I say? No. The Holy Spirit prompted me to bring this message, to remind us as a church so that we can remind other people. Because all of us in this house, between these four walls, we know of somebody that needs to hear the reason for the season is Jesus. 
Don't push him aside. Embrace him. I'm not going to close the service yet, but I want to pray. Right here this evening, you can experience what I experienced 38 years ago. Maybe you never invited Jesus into your life. Doesn't matter how old or how young you are. But I want to give you an opportunity. Or maybe you say, Pastor, I've drifted. I moved away, far away. But I want to come back. There's another gift that is so precious called the gift of grace. Skills may be get out. The gift of grace. Amen? Tonight, on this Christmas Eve, the 24th of December, 2022, God is giving you an open invite. If you say to me tonight, I really want to know Jesus. I want to encourage you to take a stand. Or if you say, Pastor, I am not where I should be, don't be shy. Rather, you take the opportunity and know that you make right with God and you at home. Why don't you stand if you say, but I've drifted away and I've become actually lukewarm, but I want to this night make a new commitment. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front, but I want you to stand where you are. Be brave. This is your moment. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Take your time, but give God a chance tonight in your life. Maybe you say, I failed him this year, but I'm not prepared to continue down this journey. I want to live a life that is victorious, and I'm thankful for those standing up there and down here. If anybody else, you're welcome to stand. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. My God, Taravash. Oh yes, let's just remain in prayer. If you're not standing, pray with me quietly where you are. Let us allow the Spirit of God to move in people's hearts. Oh God, this is your moment, church. Don't let this time go you by. Don't let it pass you by. Don't waste it. Stand if you need to. Mm. Thank you, Father. Please keep our eyes closed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Quite a few people standing. Forgive I want to pray for you. Jesus, thank you, Lord. The precious mm. blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the come to altar. altar. The Father's arms are wrong. Hallelujah. We're going to pray together. Father, we come before you this evening. Father God, I stand before you this evening because I heard your voice this night. And I want to make a change, Lord, but I cannot do it on my own. I really need your help, Lord. Lord Jesus, this moment, I'm prepared to turn away from the wickedness and sin in my life. And I come to you as the only true God. And I confess, Lord, that I don't know you. Or I confess that I've, I've moved away from you. There was a time I was on fire, but God, the fire has been quenched by myself. But now I ask you, Lord, set your fire again. Set my heart on fire in my life, Lord. Help me. Jesus, come again and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Come again, O oh Lord. And touch me right now in the name of Jesus. I give you my body, soul, and spirit. And I thank you for your blood that cleanses me from all sin and all unrighteousness and all iniquity. I commit my life to you, Lord. And I pray that you will help me from this day on to serve you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name. And so, Father, before they take their seat, I, I pray that you will seal the word which was spoken, that the devil shall not steal it in the name of Jesus. Let the word God fertilize and germinate in their hearts and may it grow 
in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a hand tonight? Amen. Amen. God is a good God, church. Can somebody say with me, God is a good God? God, is a good God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want to say to those who took a stand, I'm really proud of you that you took the boldness and the courage. And I pray that God will really help you. Amen.